Hey guys, this is Ed Rowe. Today I'm going to show you how you can create a simple D3 scatter plot in React with hooks. Alright, to start off, we have create React app already installed, and I need to install D3. So I'm going to do NBMI D3, and we're going to wait for that to finish. Okay, from there, we are going to import a few things. We're going to import some hooks from react which is use state use ref and use effect and we will be importing everything from d3 now we're going to create some mock data in our use state effect and we are going to create an array that includes a random number of arrays with random numbers inside them with an x and a y value and the x value will range from 0 to 100, and the y value ranges from 0 to 200. These are all random values that we're just going to use to plot our graph. From there, we are going to create an SVG ref using use ref so that we can put it into our SVG element tag in the ref attribute. And finally, we are going to create a use effect where we have data to be bound. So anytime data gets changed, we are going to rerun the code in here. And we will be putting our SVG or D3 code inside here. OK, now that we have that set up, um, the next thing we're going to be doing is listing out the steps that we're going to use to create our D3 scatter plot chart. So first thing is I wrote some code saying, or pseudocode writing, saying we're going to set up a container. Then we're going to set up the scaling so that the data matches the actual graph. Then we're going to set up the axis. Then we're going to add some labeling. And then we're also going to set up the actual SVG line or plots. All right, so for setting up a container, we are going to be setting the width and the height, basically the width and the height of the container. And then we're going to set up an SVG tag or element. And we're going to do that by selecting our ref and grabbing the current attribute, setting the width and the height, and setting up a few CSS styles so that it doesn't so we can see all the overflow that's happening and give it some margin so we can so it's not all the way at the top after we have that set up we are going to be setting up our scaling so this is going to be setting up the x scale and we're going to use d3 scale linear which is a simple function that allows you to set the domain since our domain is from 0 to 100 for the x values we are going to be setting that. And then the range is going to be from 0 to width. So basically, we map out 0 to 100 to this particular range of pixels. And the same thing with Y scale. We're doing the same exact thing. We're going to be doing that from 0 to 200 instead, like we mentioned. And we are going to start from the height at the top to 0 instead, because with these graphs in D3, it always starts from the top left, not the bottom left. So that's why it's inverted here. Okay, now the next thing is we're going to be setting up our actual axes. So we're going to start with the X axis, and we are going to start at the bottom of the axis and place our X scale there. And we are going to set the ticks, the number of ticks, so the number of line points that you see here right here to be the same as the length of the data so the number of data that we have and then the y-axis we're going to do something similar we're going to pass in y scale but we're just going to hard code 10 in there so we 10 is a nice value to see all the good points and if it doesn't match properly what d3 does is that it rounds us to the closest very nice number that you will be able to divide everything by so here is set to every 20 
to D3, it kind of automates a lot of that effort for you if you put in a value here. Next, we are going to be appending these axes because they haven't been attached to the SVG yet. So we append a group tag and we're going to call the X axis. And for the X axis, like we said, it always starts at the top. So we are going to set an attribute that will translate the X axis from the top to the bottom. And then from there, we are going to do the same thing with the Y axis but we don't need to translate this one. Next, we are going to set up our axis labeling, and we are going to do that by appending a text tag. And then we set the positions. These are setting positions, so we're going to set the position of X to half of the width, and we're going to set the Y to height plus 50. And by doing this, this gives us a location where we can put the text of X over here. This sets the location there. And then we're going to do the same thing with the Y value, but this time we're going to use height for the Y, or height divided by 2 for Y, and we're going to set negative 50. These are values that I've just kind of tweaked with to get the proper location, so whatever is suited to your needs, you can just move it as you need. So that gives us the labeling. Finally, now we need to actually draw all the dots that will plot the points. And we do this by selecting all, passing dot data, and passing our actual data into it. We're going to enter, and we are going to append circles to each point. And what SVGs, or what D3 will do, is cycle through and pass the X scale and each data point for zero for the CX value. So the center of each circle is going to be at this position. And the center of the Y is going to be the same thing, except we're going to use the index one here instead. We're going to pass it into our Y scale and we're going to determine the center as well. And we're going to set the radius of 2 to give us some volume. And then if we run this, oh, by the way, this is a pre-made graph that I've already created beforehand. So it doesn't represent what we have here. And as you can see, it already reloaded. We already have, we have the same exact graph that I have set up beforehand. And now you can see that we have a scatter plot with all the correct values at the right location, scaled appropriately with the correct number of ticks and labels. And there you have it. That was D3 scatter plot chart in React, which is not that scary. If you break them up again, like down to its basic components, they are pretty simple. Anyways, let me know what you think. So like, comment below if you have any questions and hit the subscribe button. See you next time.